I had a recent request for a tree of life, so I thought I'd do something slightly different, a different shape, and also encapsulate a stone, a gemstone at the base. Um, normally I would make them round, but I thought this would make something nice for uh, a Mother's Day gift, which in the UK is on March the 19th. See, these are the ones I normally make with a round circular frame, and um, you can use any little gemstone chips. Uh, you could put a tassel on it, um, and you don't have to put the base crystal in those. So you can still create those using the same method that I'm going to use for this one. Now, for the framework, I'm going to use 0.9 millimeter wire. It's um, silver plated copper. Uh, but you can use 1 mil, you can use 0 0.8, 20 gauge as well. You need to wrap it around something that's circular to create the framework, to create that shape. Um, and of course the size is completely up to you. I don't want to make it too small because it will be harder to make the tree. But of course you can make it smaller than I am. But uh, for the purposes of the tutorial. I'm going to do it this size. So um, just straighten out the crossed over wires to create the top of the pendant and there you'll get the shape that you require. So once you've got that shape um, you're going to secure the frame, just see where it crosses over, snip off uh, the end leaving just enough to make a hook and then create the hook with the tips of your round nose pliers and then you can just place the other wire into that hook and get your pliers and squeeze that little hook around it and that will just sort of squeeze and secure it that will that will create the uh, the top of the pendant and then all you need to do is centralize the wire coming from there for um, that will be the bale. So now we just want to work hard on that. So put it on your steel block with your hammer, planishing hammer, your whammer hammer, the steel end, and just stroke hammer the outer frame, the outer edge, and that will create a flattened, uh, slightly textured look, um, but also will temper it and make it nice and firm and the framework will be solid. So there we have your frame. And obviously if you wanted to make a round one, make a round one, but I just felt this was something slightly different. For the tree you're going to need a much finer wire. I'm using 0.4 millimeter, you could use 0.5, but 0.4 and then I'm measuring over twice the length of the overall pendant. Um, so I've just measured that, that will be my length. And for this piece, I'm going to cut nine uh, similar lengths to create the tree um, and all the branches and the roots. So there we have nine lengths of 0 0.4 millimeter gauge wire. Now to fix these wires onto your framework, I start at the center of my frame and center of the thin wire and then I wrap and I wrap and I wrap around the outer frame. So I'm going to do that about five or six times. Um, and then just make sure that's all nice and neat. So squidge and squish it up together. And then bring those two wires together to meet leaving a little sort of triangle gap and twist them together about five or six times again to get a little twist. That's going to be the roots of the tree. So there's your uh, first one and you're going to continue doing this on each side of that central one uh, to make the rest of the root. So wrap the center of the 0 0.4 mil five or six times, I mean you can do more, but five or six times is what I'm doing. 
and then bring those two wires together, cross them, and then twist them. So you just leave a little gap, but you can go lower than me. I just like that little gap between the frame. And then twist the two wires together. Doesn't matter which way you twist them, the right way or the left way, you know, it's basically as long as you've got a twist. And you just continue doing that all the way around the base of the frame. So here are now my roots all done. I'm just doing that last one on the side. And if you wanted a tree that had been windswept, you would veer more to the side of the frame so that the tree roots were on the side of your frame. I'm doing it quite centralized. So last one coming up, and then we're going to start making the tree and the you know the stem and all the branches. Every time you make these, you will find that they will come out slightly different, which is the fun of it. So once you've done that, bring all those um, ends of those wires together. So pinch them at the where the roots come in. So where the twist of the roots finish, grip them there, and then twist the whole lot together a few times. You don't want to twist the whole lot, but this is going to be the stem um, of the actual tree. So there's the stem. And now separate those uh, excess wires into three parts. It doesn't have to be three sort of, uh, you know, even parts. It can just be, because I want to make this as organic looking as possible. So if the bunches are a bit, you know, uneven, don't worry about that. And then grip each of those three parts and twist those a few times together. So these are going to be the thicker branches coming out from the trunk of the tree. And then you're going to carry on separating again. So once again, separate into two um, different uh, segments and twist those together for a little bit. And do that with the three different parts. At this stage, don't even look at the shape of the tree. There is no point trying to sort of design it at this point. Just do the twisting and then you can come and start rearranging. So I'm, I'm now separating again on the other segment into two parts. And then on my last and third uh, segment of the large branches, I'm separating those in two. So you can just have two wires together being twisted. It doesn't have to be a bunch of them. So now I'm trying to sort of like centralize it a bit. And I'm, I always want to make sure that I start, I'll always start with the top wire first, because that gives me a sort of, I don't know, it, it anchors it. So now I'm just separating them, spreading them out, making sure that, um, you know, the, the sort of the branches look sort of like a, a branch. And you can see this is very irregular, but that's what I want. And if you don't want a straight stem, you want a bit of a gnarly tree, which is what I like. It just gives it more character. Just bend the main trunk with your round nose pliers. Just put a little bend in here and there. And the same with all your branches. You can make this as gnarly as you want. So again, just make little bends because also that, that takes up some of the wire and otherwise you won't have any room to put any uh, of the gemstone chips which will become the blossom. Um, I mean, obviously, if you just wanted to make a tree without any gemstones on it or beads on it, you could do that. You could just do a winter tree like this and you just keep twisting until it reaches the edge of the frame and then you secure it to the edge. But I'm going to put some um, gemstone chips on to make the blossom. So now I'm just moving the uh, twisted 
wires around to create a sort of more, I don't know, organic look and of a growing older tree. And once you've you've sort of like separated them out, because you you can only feed um, onto you know one wire, because I'm using little gemstones. I've actually got some black rutilated quartz um, uh, chip beads. They're very small. I'm just going to do something very monochromatic for this one. Um, only because I'm thinking, well, it's jewellery and it can go with everything. So a sort of black and uh, monochrome, black and white look, black and grey look, will mean it's a piece of jewellery that will go with everything. So you start off by taking one of those wires and you will feed on as many of your little gemstone chips uh, as you need to reach the uh, side of the outer frame. So just feed them on until the wire reaches. As I say, I always start at the top center wire and that way I can sort of anchor the tree onto the frame and then I can work out on either side with the branches so I can get a sort of uh, a more even uh, amount of blossom on each side uh, if I take it in turns to work out each side. So once you've reached the top, you just wrap that wire a couple of times around the top, cut off any excess, uh, squeeze or squidge any of that end of the wire around so that it's not going to uh, stick out. And there you are, you've got your first bit of blossom. And then you continue on, just feeding these little tiny seed beads onto these very fine wires. Um, you might, like me, you have to wear glasses for this bit um, because the, the holes of these chips are so small. And again, every time you get the, the chips to uh, touch the side of the frame, wrap them a couple of times to anchor them and secure, and then cut really close to the frame and just squidge the ends down so that um, there's nothing um, uh, sticking out or going to scratch when you wear it. And as you work, you can just, you know, keep reforming and bending. And here you go, I've nearly finished now with those. And I've got still got some more wires to go, but I've decided I don't want to add any more chips because I want to sort of see through. So what I'm doing with these excess wires, I'm cutting them all down, just leaving enough. Uh, it's just just under a, an inch there, sort of two centimeters or so. Um, and I'm going to, I've decided instead of cutting them off, I'm going to make little tiny uh, spirals. And this will just add some more silver to the tree. And they could look like little spiral fruits or something hanging from the tree. I mean, obviously nothing is realistic. It's uh, it's completely stylized and abstracted. But there you go, tiny little spirals out of the remaining wires because I felt I had enough bulk of the um, blossom chips already. And I'm just using these up and putting these little spirals on onto the tree. Um, you can also just cut these off if you have too many wires. Um, when I said I'm using nine wires for this, um, that was because my framework is not very big. You know, you could use 15 wires for your tree and have a much bigger tree and a much wider trunk. And there is no, um, you know, I can't, I can't sort of, you know, generalize this. It, it's basically really up to you. I'm just giving you the technique and you can watch the technique and see the different things that I can that I can do with the shape and the blossom and the ends of the wire, but otherwise make it your own and um, just enjoy the process of each one being completely different. And they certainly will look different if you use different um, gemstone chips and you could use the birthstone a color of the friend that you're giving it to. Uh, There's so many different things you can do with these uh, gemstone trees. Or if you're into crystal healing, you can give 
the stone that uh, is a healing stone. Um, so there we have it. We've got now all the blossom and the branches finished. So now we're onto the roots. And I want to show you how you could put a little stone. Um, I'm going to encapsulate a little stone into the base. I've got a piece of hematite here. So obviously, if you're putting a stone in the base, you want it to be quite a flat gemstone. Um, you can buy little small tumble stones, <clears throat> small tumble stone gemstones. So I'm lifting uh, alternate roots up on one side, and then I'm going to the opposite side and lifting the other ones out in the opposite direction. And this creates a sort of um, you know, flattened cage. Can you see this? It's sort of been lifted. That way I can slip in quite a flat gemstone into that base, which will be held at the base at the root area. So just push that in and get it to sit, uh, you know, wherever you want it to sit. And then you can work on getting the roots to be a bit tighter around it. And you just push the, the side ones around and then you can just sort of tweak the front ones around it. So you're just sort of like making a little twist which tightens them. And do that on both sides so you're making sure that it's held in really firmly and it can't slip out when it's being worn. These sort of um, pendants also make lovely handbag charms. Now, I'm, I'm not hitting that hard with a hammer. I'm stroking those root wires, like burnishing them, really, just stroking it with a steel head to work hard on them. And then you just finish off by going around all the branches, making sure they are the shapes that you want. You can tighten them a bit more. Basically, that's how you create the um, gemstone trees of life. And for the top, um, you can find a bead that will go with the rest of your um, pendant. And then you could make a little bale for the top. You can either just curl a, a jump ring to the top, but I'm going to show you how I make a sort of little bit of a bale. I'm going to hammer and flatten the area just above the bead. So what I'm doing is I'm spreading and flattening the wire, as you can see, on my steel block, just that area, not the very top, just the area above the bead. And that means that when I curl it round into the bale, it's a bit more flattened and it's spread, so it doesn't just look like round wire. It gives much more of an effect of a bale. So now I'm just going to wrap it round my round nose pliers to create the top link and the unhammered piece at the end can then be wrapped around so I pick it up with my chain nose pliers, the tips of my chain nose pliers and I'm just going to push and squeeze that tiny bit of end uh, around the top, just under the top of that bead and make sure it's completely secure and squashed in, and that gives you a nice sturdy little bit of a, a bale there. And you can put it on a cord, put it on a chain, put it on a key ring, um, whatever you want to, to hang it from. Uh, so I hope you enjoy making these with your own gemstones. Um, make them any a type and style of frame that you want. It could be a square, a rectangle, and uh, it would be a lovely present, I think, for Mother's Day on March the 19th um, in the UK. So happy wire working. <laughs>